and climb live on your show, you'd probably cut me right off. I don't know who you're. T- oh, wait, who are you talking about? Who is that? It's it's a local show on live. You're trying to just inject something that has nothing to do with the discussion. What what percent of the First Amendment would you permit to be operative? Fifty percent, eighty percent, ninety percent. What percent? The percent where it starts to hurt your own people. So what is that percent? Who will decide it? You, the federal government, who will make that decision? The ACLU. Who will decide what is permissible under the First Amendment and what is not permissible? Tell me who makes that decision. Whoever's running the event that has the thing. So if you're also oh, any, so Pamela made the decision. Pamela Geller made the decision that she wanted to run a Draw the Prophet Muhammad cartoon event. Right. I mean, because she's the one who put people in danger. I mean, she needs to offer proper protection. Well, she did offer proper protection. The Muslims were shot dead. That should tell you that she offered proper protection. So our people weren't hurt, so then it's okay. Right. Maybe the, maybe the next group of uh, brave warriors will think twice with their body armor and their AKs. Maybe they'll realize they could have their heads blown off by a sheriff. Maybe they won't be so quick to shoot people like sheep at Fort Hood because they were unarmed. They're dealing with Texans there, not Californians and San Francisco. Sir, stop talking about a host we never heard of. It's just a plug for a local show. I never heard of him. And he's just trying to provoke me into saying something. I don't even know who he's talking about. He didn't make his point. But he, he got on the air. Why? Because I believe in freedom of speech, and I thought he was going to have a rational argument with me. Okay, what do you want to talk about? That's the issue. Let's take one more caller, open up one more line, WMAL in Washington, D.C. Chuck, go ahead, please. You know, Michael, you're really, really upsetting me. Uh, that poor kid that got shot. If we had had some government programs, if we would invest our money in some government programs to educate these people that convert, we might not have had this problem. Oh, here we go again. It's our fault that he became a Muslim. I'm just pulling your leg. I think that cop should be given a medal, to be honest. Well, okay, I understand. I mean, he worked in a dental office, the Muslim, the brave Muslim with body armor and a machine gun. The cop, the Texas cop, had a handgun and was able to shoot him in the head. Two of them. With, with, with the machine guns, Chuck, that guy should be a national hero. If we had a legitimate president, he'd be invited to the White House and talked about as a role model instead of some sicko from the gutters. I'm speaking to you as a combat veteran. You know, whether I agree with what you have to say or not, I will fight to the death for your right to say it. You're hired. You're hired. You are hired. You are hired. You are hired, and I'm giving you a gift right away because I want you to fly out to San Francisco to protect me. I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. Gorgeous book, the third in the trilogy. Everyone who bought the other two better buy this one because it's the last one. People say, oh, come on, you're kidding me. You're really going to write another? Nope. They're too hard. Won't do it. No more. No more. That's it. It's the third in the Jack Hatfield trilogy. Okay, one caveat. One caveat. If in my lifetime... I see a movie made by Hollywood based on my first two novels or the third where they take me off the blacklist created by Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg and Weinstein. If Hollywood produces one of the novels as a movie, I'll consider doing a fourth. But I doubt that's going to happen. I'd rather just paint watercolors, give out scholarships to deserving poor children who want to go to college and what it means to be an American contest for the rest of my life and try to do some other good things. I, I've come up with other things I want to do. I'm not going to write anymore like that. I can't do it. But let's stick to today's show. Texas, Muslims, machine guns, body armor. They tried to shoot up a free speech event, however offensive, and instead they went to Allah land because a Texas, uh, a traffic cop in Texas blew their heads out off with the body armor. Let's hear it for Texas traffic cops. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. So what people are saying is that there's always this fine line, you know, between freedom of speech and being um, intentionally incendiary and provocative. 
intentionally incendiary and provocative by drawing a cartoon. This is the low state of freedom of speech in this country. Then you have filth on television attacking Christians on a daily basis. I can name one movie after another that's ripped Christianity and Christians mock them for decades from the Weinsteins of Hollywood and the Larry Davids. You want me to tell you about them? I find them so offensive it makes me sick, but I don't go shoot anybody over it. I stop watching their filth. That's what I do. I don't shoot people up because I come from the United States of America, the most civilized nation on the planet. One of the shooters, this guy Simpson, uh, said he was tired of living on the non-Muslims. Can you believe this? He said he was tired of living on the non-Muslims, according to a federal document, stemming from his January 2010 indictment on charge of lying to an FBI agent. He said, I'm tired of living on the non-Muslims. And he said that non-Muslims are fighting against Allah and that his money and taxes are going towards their weapons. Now, where did he get this filth in his head from? Who put this garbage in his head, this dental assistant? Imagine he was cleaning teeth. Worked in a dental office cleaning teeth. Could you imagine all the while his mind was swirling with hatred against America, against white people? Can you imagine what's going on in this country? It's all coming up like a pus. Obama has opened up a, a, a wound that was somewhat healed, almost healed, and now pus is coming out. Maybe in the long run it'll be a better nation. Maybe it'll be a worse nation. Maybe there'll be no nation. We know that Obama, the most incompetent surgeon in the history of the presidency, has set off a race war in America. And we also know that it's only going to get worse, not better. That's according to the latest poll. Most Americans think a race war is occurring right now because of Obama and Holder and Sharpton and the other racial provocateurs. Is that hate speech? Is what Barack Obama has been doing not hate speech? Attacking cops? Attacking white cops? Isn't that hate speech? He did it perfectly legitimately. He didn't do it in German. He didn't do it with the Horst Vessel song playing behind him. He did it like a smooth delivery, because he's a smooth deliverer of hatred and such. Obama delivers hate speech every day. Al Sharpton delivers hate speech every day. Should they be banned? Who do you want to ban next? Al Sharpton, Barack Obama, Eric Holder? Who do you want to ban next? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So one of the shooters, one of the Muslim converts there was, uh, he was on a government no-fly list. They knew who he was. The FBI knew who he was. He was probably a double agent or something. And he went off, that's all, he went off the grid. So uh, Muhammad art exhibit in contest. Provocative, yes. Offensive, yes. But we live in America. We don't live in Yemen. And provocation, provocation and offense is part of the culture of America, is it not? Look what Harvey Weinstein produces. Look what Sean Penn does in his movies. They're, they're offensive movies to most of us. We don't burn theaters down because of what Weinstein produces. Do we burn theaters down because Weinstein attacks Christians in movies, making a mockery of people with crosses and turning everyone who goes to church into some kind of moron? We don't burn theaters down. We just don't go to the movie. Now, depictions of the Prophet Muhammad are another story to the liberal. Because they are, oh, they know the law, that they know. Oh, that's considered offensive in Islam, that's provocative. So what about Christians? Well, they don't kill, so we can provoke them. That's all, that's, that's the whole story. So there's the story in a nutshell, and the hero here is the cop, the traffic cop, shot him dead in the head. Dead in the head. It wasn't the FBI who saved the attendees, it wasn't the ATF, it wasn't the Homeland Security, they did nothing. Nothing, they were there to taking pictures of everyone who attended to see if they get them on a watch list. Texas traffic cop all I can tell you is if you're driving through Texas you better obey the traffic cops if they pull you over and ask you for your license one thing you'll know now is that uh, the Muhammad the Mujahideen are not going to use Texas as a, a testing ground for a probe they're not going to try it again they might you know they might actually go get the sturgeon this time instead of the virgin they may find themselves swimming with the fishes Anyway, that's the story. It's actually, a, you know, it's an interesting story, and it's very good. It's actually good to this story. This is actually the first time, I think, that I've seen these brave Muslims with body armor this time and AKs come out shooting and get, and get killed. Can you imagine if Clinton had not disarmed our troops at Fort Hood? Could you imagine if the troops all had weapons when uh, the major, the Muslim major in Dal Hassan went on a shooting spree? and reloaded and reloaded and shot 13, killed 13, injured 
something like 50 some odd people. Imagine if Clinton had not disarmed our troops on bases and they had had weapons, they could have killed the Muslim major, who was still alive, by the way. Timothy McVeigh was executed within two years, I think, or two and a half, less than that. The Muslim major is being protected by the powers that be. Why? Why haven't they executed Muslim major Nidal Hassan? Why hasn't he been executed yet? Well, you tell me. But anyway, that's a sideshow. Gunman at an anti-Islam event fired an unarmed security officer. No kidding, with a machine gun. But the traffic cop was so quick, he pulled out his handgun and killed both of them. Headshots. Headshots. Now, you know the FBI is going to investigate the traffic cop. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have to investigate him. How could he do his job so well without consulting a, a Barack? Why didn't he call? I want to know why that traffic cop did not call the White House to find out if he could kill the, uh, the men with machine guns. Maybe they were just uh, law-abiding citizens shooting off their guns for an event, some kind of holiday. Maybe they just wanted to hear sound. It was like fireworks in their culture. They could have used the cultural of, hey, wait a minute. You see, we have it all wrong. The Muslims with body armor and AKs, they may not have even been going to the event to shoot anybody. They could have been good Muslims going there to defend Pamela Geller. And they were trying to warn away other Mujahideen who were hiding in the bushes. And this gun-crazy Texan shot them. So there could be a case against them. If you're Barack Obama or Al Sharpton, this could be a case of, uh, of racism. Because I'm pretty sure the traffic cop was white and the poor Muslim was not white. I'm pretty sure he was an African-American convert to Islam. This is definitely a case for the uh, Justice Department to look into. Sean on WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I just uh, had a comment on the uh, the shooting in Texas. I would have to agree with this. That let's not do that. I mean, we, like you always say, what do we know? We know that doing the depiction of Muhammad is super offensive to these people, and you know it's going to incite violence. And I just I don't see the reason why they even why they even have the contest. I understand they were maybe giving out. Ten well, let me ask you something, Sean. You sound like a young man who's been brainwashed in a university. Do you remember years ago when there was a Skokie march of American Nazis through a Jewish community? The ACLU defended the Nazis. Do you know that? Okay. No, I, I can't say that I did know no. that. Why, why did the ACLU defend the Nazis? Why did they let the Nazis march through Skokie, Illinois? Well, but, uh, I'm, look, I'm, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I'm saying... Do, do, well, I'm not yes. saying it's a good thing either, but the ACLU defended the Nazis' right to provoke Jews. They said it, we, it's offensive, but it's freedom of speech. Fair enough. I understand that, but all, we know ACLU is a complete joke, right? We know all they do is... Well, it like, doesn't matter, but they have a point, which is where do we draw the line in free speech, which is what we're talking about on the ra on the radio today, Sean. Where is the line? Look, I, look I, like, like the man said before, the gentleman said before, you know, he will fight to the death to the, defend the ability for you to say what you feel. But again, if you go around saying offensive things to people all day long and someone punches you in the mouth, well, you kind of... That's right. That's right. That's why they had security. And they got punched in the head first. Those who would those who would have stopped the event got got killed because they wanted to kill everybody in that auditorium, didn't they? For for Allah, didn't they say that they were tired of living under a non-Muslim uh, nation and this and that, and they wanted to go to heaven? Well, they got what they wished for. No, absolutely. Look, I'm I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you there. But in 1977, the leader of the National Socialist Party of America in Skokie, Illinois announced that the party intended to march through Skokie, Illinois, in the predominantly Jewish community, uh, where one in six residents was a Holocaust survivor. Now, the, the National Socialist Party, the American Nazi Party, did march. And take a guess who defended them, the ACLU. The ACLU challenged an injunction which said they shouldn't march because it'll be offensive to the Jews. The ACLU challenged the injunction issued by the Circuit Court of Cook County, Illinois, that prohibited marchers at the proposed Skokie rally from wearing Nazi uniforms or displaying swastikas. The Jews in the ACLU, represented by civil rights attorney Burton Joseph, another Jewish man, argued in favor of the Nazis to wear a Nazi uniform. Why? The challengers argued that the injunction violated the First Amendment rights of the marchers to express themselves. So now that's where we are today. That's where we are today. So now Pamela Geller holds this event on Muhammad. She is legally r able to do so. It's, it's as simple as that. She was able to do it. It's that simple. What the end game was for that? Do we know? Like, I understand they were giving. Well, now you're asking another question. Did she want to provoke violence to show the world what mu it, some Muslims are capable of? Is that what she wanted to do? I don't know. Did she? 
I, mean, I don't know. I don't know the woman. I've never had her on my show. I find her too too provocative for my show. Probably a good call. But I but I respect her. I mean, I, she she's a little too provocative.